Hi guys, Scott here with Stay Wild Bushcraft, um, being presented here on Stay Wild TV on YouTube. So today I'm going to uh, show you guys how to turn a piece of sweet chestnut like this into a simple mallet. So we've obviously got our sectioned piece of sweet chestnut and all we're going to do is make a series of stop cuts, but on with my knife down to those stop cuts to make the handle and then we might just round off the edge so it doesn't split very easily and that's literally as simple as it is. So first things first, we're going to just simply decide which end we're actually going to use as the mallet and which end we're going to use as the handle. There's not really a lot, lot in this but I think we'll use this end up here as there's a few more knots which means the grain's a little bit more um, compacted in some sections so it's less likely to split. Um, and this ends a little bit more knot free, so we use that as the handle, handle end. So we're going to place this down on our tree round here, and we're just going to simply, you know, just over a hand's width down, we're going to make our first stop cut. And we're simply going all the way round piece of wood. You don't have to go in majorly deep, certainly not halfway, probably 10 mil or a centimeter in, maybe a little bit more all the way around will be sufficient. and try and make sure you can line your cuts up. One thing you do not want is for this to snap. Just keep going around, find any bits that are a little bit shallower. Obviously this end is going to be our handle end. So once you've gone all the way around like that, go about halfway back up. So the handle end, actual mallet end, you've made your stop cut around here. Go about halfway back up and make another stop cut. This is because if you try and split straight down with uh, just the stop cut you've made, you're more likely to go off at an angle or go in and split things. So if you make a second stop cut, then you've only got to split down from here to here, and then you can split from there to there again. It's a lot, lot safer and a lot more efficient. This poor uh, Lapland is showing its age. It's not blunt, but there is definitely a slight bend in the old blade. Only a slight warp. but it is catching just ever so slightly. So we have to bend that back out. That's one of the good things about a Laplander is uh, they don't tend to snap very easily and they can be bent back into place because the actual steel for the main blade itself is very soft, whereas the teeth are over hardened and glued on or something. So if you actually bend it, you can bend it back into position without snapping it off. I wouldn't recommend heating it up to do it. Despite the fact the metal bends a lot easier when it's warm, it'll probably mess up the heat treat and uh, end up in a worse position. But the price of these are really going up. I mean, it's still a lot cheaper than a silky. And I prefer these to silkies simply because of the uh, blade setup, teeth setup, is you get a cut on both the pull and the push stroke so there's a lot less wasted energy whereas silkies are just pull source you only get yeah it doesn't actually cut on the uh, 
push stroke, it just cuts on the pull stroke. So every time you go forward, you're just wasting energy because it's not actually cutting into the wood. Also, I think for the price, you can't build, beat a uh, back of a laplander. There are definitely better saws out there, but price-wise, can't beat it. Keep going back round. Like I said, find any high spots, just take them down. It's not the end of the world if you don't go down too far with the saw as you can then use your knife to neaten it up. So I'd say I need to go a little bit more further around so I'll catch you guys once I've done that because you probably don't want to watch me sawing for two minutes straight which you probably already have. See if I can edit that out. Okay, so now we've done the sawing, it's time to now put on off the sections that you want to take off. So obviously you'll need belt knife, machete or an axe. Obviously machetes and axes are a bit safer to and a bit more efficient to put on with because the working edge is a little bit longer so it's easier to hit. So when I use a belt knife because the cutting edge is shorter I always bring a wedge with me or make a wedge. So I've made this one today. Um, and literally, this is just designed so that if your knife gets stuck in the workpiece, instead of having to fill it out and potentially cutting yourself trying to get it out, um, you just leave the knife blade in there, stick the wooden wedge over your split line, having the wedge in, the wedge will continue splitting the wood. You allow your knife to simply safely fall onto the floor and then you can safely pick it up afterwards. Campfire's getting a bit smoky again. Wind keeps changing direction in here. And obviously you need a battling stick. This one's a bit long, but we'll see how we get on with it. So place your knife over where you want to split down and then simply hit the spine of the knife. And then you should go down to your first um, it's your first stop cut if it's deep enough it'll come off if it's not quite deep enough then it won't come off this is kind of on the borderline there we go and then move your workpiece around 
Same again. There we go, that was a bit better. Again. Again, we didn't quite go far enough back on our stop cut there. So it's just caught up, but you know, you just pop it off. And then the last cut. Deer about. So that's the start of your handle, and then continue down onto the second stop cut. That's in there well. If you can't get it, you can always hit it down a little bit more or move around to the opposite side and go back to that. So that came through quite nicely. Just this side here. Also be mindful of where you put your knife down. Dear, you should always put it back in your sheath when you're not using it. So there we go, you have the start of your handle. Now it's just a case of rounding the edges off and then round the top off. So again, you can use your baton to do this. Just put it over the edge. And I can always try and put it a little bit further onto your work block if you can save yourself any problems this is not the roundest piece when it comes to the bottom of it so it will move around a bit so these are disposable battens or mallets you know they're designed for basically replacing this if you move it down stick it in that there. And knock that corner off there. Just keep knocking the corners off. Unless you want to be a bit careful that you don't go too far into these otherwise you're going to lose most of your handle and then once you get to a certain point you can literally just start taking bits of wood off from around the outside there's a bit of a knot there so we'll have to work through that you can always do reverse so this is a forearm grip, front hand grip. Basically look like you're about to punch someone. Put your knife out there. You can turn the knife back away towards you to reverse hand grip. So you can get a chest lever in. Take a little bit more material off. That's what I'm gonna do to get past this knot. Obviously some people say don't cut towards yourself, but this is actually quite a safe grip to use to cut towards yourself. One thing, I've got the workpiece stopping the knife, and if the knife did come this way, my hand will stop it going any further. But this is good for getting some detail cuts in. And also working towards the end, it was a little bit awkward doing the opposite direction.
so that handle's comfortable enough. Like I said, it's only for batoning wood, really. Um, and then just to give it, I mean, you don't have to do anything else, but I'm just going to chamfer or trim the edges up here to make it less likely to split. So again, as I've already got my hands in the reversed hand grip, I'm just going to do a bit of chest leverage again. You're basically coming up, placing your blade on your workpiece, and then effectively doing like chicken wings and bringing your shoulders out to get the power from your upper body. You can get much more powerful cuts that way. It's still safe because you're still cutting away from yourself. Um, and then I'm just going to do a quick trim around the very top edge. Thumb grip. Thumb assisted leverage. And this is just intersecting the grain of the wood. So when you're hitting down on it, the shock waves are getting dispersed out across the entire piece of wood rather than down through the grain so it's less likely to split on you. When you finish with a knife, always put it back in its sheath. And there we go. Down and dirty, simple bushcraft mallet. As you can see, I've just taken the top off around there and rounded the edges off to help with shock absorption. But yeah, these are disposable, you know, they can last quite a long time. Don't be worried if they break, just make another one. It doesn't have to be sweet chestnut. It just sweet chestnut splits easily. It's a relatively hard wood, so it's pretty good for using to make mullets. Well, guys, I hope you liked this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm trying to grow my channel at the moment, so if you are new to the channel, thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing. Um, and until next time guys, stay wild.